Hello info person, this is Anton, and it looks like we have a new mystery. A mystery in regards to a completely new type of an explosion. Here we're talking about a cosmic explosion, or basically a space explosion. Something astronomers usually call a transient, that has never actually been seen before, and has now been officially identified as something entirely new, and something potentially very important. But in this case, because this type of an explosion is not actually that powerful, and is not really that bright, it's now referred to as a millinova. So kind of like a supernova, a kilonova and so on, but in this case, much, much, much weaker. As a matter of fact, it's even weaker than a typical nova explosion, which usually occurs on a lot of different white dwarfs. But in this case, surprisingly, it might have a somewhat similar mechanism and potentially even comes from somewhat similar objects. And so let's actually talk about this new discovery in a little bit more detail, but let's start with the discovery first, and with where and how all of this was found. And it kind of started with this. This event is known as Assassin 16OH, not because this is an assassin killing someone, but because in this case this is an acronym that stands for All Sky Automated Survey for Supernova. So basically the main purpose of this survey was to discover various transients, usually various supernova. It's an automated survey, so it basically detects them and reports them almost right away. And a few years back it detected this one, that was actually very bizarre for a lot of different reasons. With the biggest reason being the types of emissions. Here, it surprisingly was not very bright in the optical emissions, so basically it didn't change much in brightness when looking at this with a telescope, but when combined with the X-ray observations, things looked very different. It seemed to produce extremely powerful X-ray emissions, but the X-rays here were low in energy, usually referred to as soft X-rays basically suggesting some kind of a really hot gas, possibly hundreds of thousands of degrees in temperature, as opposed to temperatures of millions of degrees. But here these X-rays were very different from a typical star and were actually pretty bright, so this basically did suggest some kind of a nova-like event. Or basically suggesting some kind of a white dwarf, or something similar to a white dwarf, very likely having a lot of really hot gas around it, suddenly forming huge explosions and a lot of heat. And that's because usually these soft X-ray emissions have always been associated with white dwarfs. But unlike in previous emissions, or unlike in previous nova, the optical emissions were surprisingly dim. And that's because normally in a typical nova, what actually happens is you have two stars. You have a white dwarf and some kind of a companion. That companion is essentially a donor and it makes the white dwarf accumulate a lot of mass, which at some point becomes so critical and so dense that it basically initiates a nuclear reaction on the surface, literally exploding like an enormous nuclear bomb, which obviously produces X-rays, but also produces optical emissions. And because this is a periodic event, it also sometimes happens relatively frequently. But because in this case there was no optical counterpart, that's why this particular transient became a bit mysterious. So basically here, no signs of nuclear fusion were detected, yet we still had X-rays, so something was definitely heating up the gas. And in the last few years, several models have been proposed, but they basically all involved a white dwarf. For example, some kind of a really massive white dwarf, 1.1 solar masses in mass, very likely accreting mass from its partner, but the mass that was actually not exploding as much, and instead was depositing on the surface, and very likely heating up in the process. And in this case, because this mass was not exploding, and was depositing, it made the white dwarf grow over time. And this is actually an important fact I'm going to come back to in a few minutes. But at first, following this initial detection, scientists thought that maybe this is just some kind of a weird object and some kind of an exception. But not everyone thought so, and so in one of the recent studies, a team of Polish astronomers, whose names I'm not going to try to pronounce because Polish names, published this very interesting new paper proposing a new concept and a new type of an explosion, Milinova. And that's because they've conducted a relatively thorough search using over a decade of observations, and specifically 20 years of data, from the Polish-based survey known as OGLE, or Optical Gravitational Landing Experiment, which allowed them to uncover a lot more of these objects relatively close to us. And specifically here they now discovered 29 of these unusual objects, mostly located in the Magellanic Clouds, the satellites of the Milky Way galaxy, that all exhibited extremely similar behavior and produced very similar emissions. And so here's how the scientists now define these millinova. First of all, they all have to have a relatively long-lasting outburst. It has to last at least several months. Second of all, here the brightness of the object has to increase by at least 10 times, in some cases 20 times, but not too much. This is why they're called millinova. But more importantly, they have to get brighter in the X-rays 
and not really the optical light. And that's because in this case, it basically represents a huge deposition of gas from the star on the surface of the white dwarf that doesn't seem to lead to the typical nuclear explosion we expect from the nova. Or in other words, the X-rays in this case seem to be produced by huge amounts of material that falls on the surface of this white dwarf, releasing some energy in the process, but not exploding. Although some alternative explanations suggest that some nuclear explosions just much smaller in size. But the explosion is not violent enough to basically expel everything from the surface like it usually happens in a typical classical nova, which we've seen many times before, by the way. And in order for this to happen, you basically have to have two stars relatively close to one another, one being a donor and one being a white dwarf. And the orbit between them has to be pretty close as well, with a period of just a few days. But in order to confirm some of this, researchers also focused on one of these objects and tried to analyze it in as much detail as possible. Here this is the object referred to as OGLE MNOVA 11. The object that began its outburst in November of 2023 and the object that was now seen with the Southern African Large Telescope, one of the largest telescopes on the planet. And so by looking at this star, they now saw definitive signs of ionized helium, also carbon and nitrogen, whose ionization suggested super high temperatures. But then through additional observations using the NASA SWIFT observatory, they also discovered X-rays that suggested temperatures of 600,000 degrees Celsius. And because this object was about 160,000 light years away from us, it basically suggested that whatever this was, it was only about 100 times as luminous as our sun, which for a typical nova would be extremely dim. So this was definitely a much smaller explosion. But the super hot gas, very powerful X-rays, and the sudden increase and then decrease in luminosity basically suggested a transient event, which seemed to resemble other 29 events in every way. They actually all seem to have this unusual triangular shape and even seem to have relatively similar power, essentially suggesting a similar source and very similar physics. Although strangely enough, some of these objects seem to also repeat these outbursts every few years, which once again highlighted that this is probably a white dwarf and some kind of a partner. A lot of recurring nova actually repeat in a very similar way. But once again, because these were so much dimmer and produced so much less power, they have now been named Milinova. And that's actually because at their peak, their brightness is approximately 1000 times weaker compared to a classical nova and millions of times lower than a typical supernova. But because so many of these events were discovered in the Magellanic clouds, this is why it gets kind of interesting because now several studies have also suggested that this is probably something super important. Specifically, several other studies that focus on these events have now proposed that this is very likely an actual candidate for the famous Type 1a supernova. Or basically what we're looking at right here is the progenitor for a Type 1a supernova that scientists have always used as a standard candle to measure distances in space. I mean, that famous concept of dark energy was only discovered because of the measurements of Type 1a supernova from extremely distant galaxies. And that's because usually Type 1a supernova produce very similar explosions with very similar brightnesses. And this only happens when a typical white dwarf reaches its Chandrasekhar limit, approximately 1.4 solar masses in mass. And that can only happen if the white dwarf continuously accumulates mass on its surface, growing more massive every single year. Now in a typical classical nova, because a lot of surface material basically explodes dispersing in the process, this could take a really long time, billions of years, possibly longer. But in this particular case, or in these 29 cases, because the explosion doesn't actually disperse the material, with most of the material and most of the gas depositing on the surface, some of the initial calculations from two of these events calculated the mass deposition to be approximately one millionth of the solar mass per year. Which means that within approximately three to maybe 10 million years, quite a few of these white dwarfs would actually reach their limit and very likely go supernova. In other words, just to rephrase this, Based on the calculations from this event, for example, Assassin 16OH, assuming this hypothesis is correct, in less than 20 million years, it might actually create Type 1a supernova as well, as the white dwarf grows in mass and as it eventually reaches its critical mass. With the main question from all of these studies right now being, did we actually finally discover a prototypical example of a Type 1a supernova and is this really how they all form? And that's because previously it was not certain what the progenitors for this very famous supernova were. Like I mentioned, in a normal nova, the explosion is so powerful that it basically disturbs a lot of gas around the white dwarf, making it very difficult for a typical white dwarf 
to accumulate mass effectively. But here, because the explosions are so much weaker, and because the mass deposition seems to be pretty high, based on the X-ray missions at least, it means that these white dwarfs are going to be growing very fast and only have a few million years to go before reaching their critical mass. And if so, so then the question is, I guess, what makes this different from a typical nova? Or in other words, why do some white dwarfs produce melee nova, some produce nova, and some produce something entirely different? Why does the gas around white dwarfs explode in different ways? And what causes some explosions to be much smaller than others? Now right now, because this is a brand new discovery, it will obviously take a few years to figure this out. But once more similar objects are discovered in, for example, our own galaxy, maybe a little bit closer to us, and once scientists are able to analyze these objects even longer, we'll probably get some of our first answers and finally figure out what's going on here. For now though, it really looks like these Milinova might be the best progenitors for the famous Type 1a supernova, which will obviously help us understand how all of this works, maybe even helping us predict one of these events before it actually happens, allowing us to observe this possibly in almost real time. And so yeah, we have a new mysterious explosion called Milinova, and there seem to be at least 29 objects out there exhibiting these bizarre explosions. We'll come back and talk more about this once there are some discoveries. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.